Naruto versus Gojo. This is a debate that actually isn't brought up as a lot, as opposed to something like Goku versus Gojo, which, shameless plug, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. But this is mostly a debate worth talking about because of Gojo's complex abilities, with people always comparing him due to his abilities like the Limitless, which allows Gojo to pretty much never be touched. In this video, I'll be going over how Naruto could potentially fare up against such an ability, and who I personally think wins this specific matchup. Gojo is a character from the series known as Jujutsu Kaisen, where he would massively upscale from the likes of Dagon, who with his domain expansion, actually created an entire island. This is a very interesting way of actually scaling Jujutsu Kaisen, and a lot of people don't actually agree with domains scaling to OP. However, even if you do think this, Gojo would 100% scale to this, since we literally see him spam domain expansion several times during his fight with Sukuna, and even Dagon's domain expansion is capable of being held up by Dagon for multiple days to possibly weeks at a time, as this was the hideout Kenjaku and gang were using. But just to sort of answer a lot of questions, since I've covered both Naruto and Gojo several times on the channel, yes, Naruto is blatantly stronger, and it's not close. This is mainly due to things like Kaguya pretty much just nuking dimensions using her expansive true-seeking orb, which the data books actually claim that after this orb quote-unquote destroys the dimensions, nothing will be left behind. This is mainly important due to the fact that we see moons as well as stars within one of the lesser dimensions, and even the Genesis Dimension, which contains more chakra than the others, was still going to be nuked by Kaguya using the orb. Which Naruto at half chakra would scale to base and fuse Momoshiki, who is stronger than Kinshiki, who is actually stated by Sasuke to be a threat that is surpassing Kaguya. This would essentially scale Kaguya in that large star to potentially even solar system ranges of power, depending on certain calcs you use for the actual orb itself. However, I actually cover Naruto's AP within my Naruto vs. Asta video, so if you want a more detailed explanation on where Naruto scales, then consider watching that video. This becomes even more apparent when you consider the things like the Bijou within the series being able to just straight up nuke mountains, and potentially even more than that if you consider that these explosions actually show the curvature of the Earth, who Naruto in Sage Mode in the Pain Invasion arc would scale above most Akatsuki members who are suited to be at the level of a Bijou, this would pretty much mean that even lower end feats within the series trump over even the highest feats within Jujutsu Kaisen. Well, unless you consider things like Sukuna being able to destroy the world on the Jujutsu Kaisen volumes, as well as Yuki's curse technique potentially turning her into a planet buster, as world, in the context of the series, is only ever referred to when talking about the planet, or even Hakari having infinite cursed energy in his jackpot state, which if you use character stats and profiles, could potentially qualify Jackpot Hakari for High Universal, which we aren't using because a versus battle wiki is better in my opinion. So saying Naruto is superior in power is objectively correct. But as I said at the beginning of the video, the main thing that makes Gojo as a combatant virtually unstoppable is his curse technique called the Limitless. Now the Limitless technique is completely passive, which we actually find out within the Hidden Inventory arc, and what this Limitless essentially does is create an infinite space between him and his opponent. This infinite space slows down opponents and objects intended to inflict harm upon Gojo. Gojo's ability does not function as a conventional barrier or wall that permits attacks to pass through. Instead, what it actually does is effectively prevent them from ever actually reaching Gojo, unless the attacker possesses an attack that does not travel or can move at infinite or immeasurable speeds. We actually see Jogo attempt to touch Gojo, which, during this fight, we actually see that Jogo's hand doesn't actually come to a complete stop. Instead, what actually happens is that it's being slowed down infinitely due to the spatial manipulation happening due to Gojo's technique. This is actually described by Gojo to be the Achilles and the Tortoise Paradox. The Achilles and the Tortoise Paradox is a classic thought experiment that highlights the concept of infinite divisibility and the nature of motion. It was famously formulated by the ancient Greek philosopher named Zeno. The paradox goes as follows. Achilles, a swift Greek hero, challenges a tortoise to a race. However, to make it fair, he gives the tortoise a head start, which will say the tortoise starts 10 meters ahead of Achilles. Now, Zeno argues that if Achilles wants to overtake the tortoise, he must first reach the point where the tortoise started. However, by the time Achilles actually reaches that point, the tortoise will have moved a short distance ahead. 
which will say it traveled one meter. Now, Achilles must reach this new point, but by the time he does, the tortoise will have moved again. Even if it's only by a fraction of a meter, the process continues infinitely. The paradox arises because Achilles seems to be faced with a series of infinitely many smaller distances that he must cover to actually reach said tortoise. According to Zeno, since there are an infinite number of smaller distances, Achilles will never be able to overtake the tortoise and actually win the race. However, this paradox is resolved by understanding the concept of an infinite series and the nature of motion. In reality, Achilles will eventually overtake the tortoise and win the race. This is possible because we can sum an infinite series of progressively smaller distances in a finite amount of time. Mathematically, the paradox assumes that the sum of an infinite series of decreasing distances is also infinite. But in calculus, we know that the sum of certain infinite series can converge to a finite value. In the case of Achilles and the tortoise, the sum of an infinite series of distances converges to a finite value, which allows Achilles to catch up and pass the tortoise. This paradox serves as a philosophical puzzle, challenging our intuition about the nature of motion and the concept of infinity. This is the impossibility that Gojo is capable of bringing forth into reality via his technique. So, no, Gojo isn't invincible, and he can also be harmed and killed in several ways. Gojo not only has his infinity, but also has the extensions of the Limitless Curse technique passed down from the Gojo family. Blue is achieved when the Limitless user greatly amplifies the amount of cursed energy poured into his technique. This brings the concept of negative numbers, as well as negative distance, into reality, forcing real space to compensate and fill in the area by drawing everything toward the impossibility, which generates a strong force of attraction, similar to a powerful magnet, or a black hole. However, since cursed energy is naturally negative energy, multiplying two sources of cursed energy against itself would naturally create positive energy which is called the reverse curse technique. In doing this, Gojo is able to reverse the effects of the strength of Limitless, and rather than the attractive force of blue, red is the repulsion of said force. By mixing the two infinities, he creates an imaginary mass called Holo Purple. This isn't necessarily all of Gojo's abilities, as even within Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 0, the Limitless technique is stated to function at the atomic level, which grants it durability negation on that level. This obviously is an existence erasure since the Limitless functioning on this level completely disproves any notion that it is conceptual or intangible erasure. This is simply Duraneg on the atomic level. Because of this, you probably couldn't simply assert that the Limitless could function on any other level aside from the atomic, since saying this would simply fall under the no limits fallacy, which asserts that when someone states that because something has not demonstrated any limits, or only certain limits, then it has none or only the ones actually demonstrated. Meaning that if something like, say, the Tosca Blade, which has no physical form because it's not a physical object, couldn't be filtered on the atomic level because its material literally doesn't exist, which is something that I covered in Itachi vs. Gojo, but I didn't really go over the specifics of why it would filter, because I assumed it was pretty self-explanatory. Now, you might be wondering how Naruto actually bypasses this. Now, for starters, I'd like to mention the Truth Sicking Orbs. The true sicking orbs is something that Naruto gained when Hagoromo gave Naruto six paths Senjutsu, and he was able to use these Sage six paths KCM alongside it, which granted him the true sicking orbs. Now you're probably wondering how these would bypass Infinity. During Naruto's fight with Kaguya, we would actually learn that Kaguya's dimensions were actually going to be obliterated by a true sicking orb. Zetsu comments on the inclusion of time and space within this vaporization. Now, keep in mind that true seeking orbs are made up of chakra, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what it is. Zetsu actually comments that the true seeking orb created by Kaguya is literally a new time space, which would potentially mean that the regular true seeking orbs are hence small pockets of time space, operating on a fourth dimensional level. This would potentially also qualify Naruto for 4D AP if we were to consider Versus Battle Wiki standards for Universal Plus scaling. However, we already established that Naruto is indeed superior to Gojo in base stats. However, in order to actually say that Gojo's infinity could filter a 4th dimensional true sticking orb, would, again, have no basis on it, as you couldn't necessarily prove that infinity can filter on a 4th dimensional level or filter 4th dimensional attacks. 
An argument that I've seen be used in regards to a fourth dimensional infinity would be something like the worm inventory curse that Toji had on his shoulder, being stated to contain a fourth dimensional inside, and Gojo's hollow purple being able to tear right through it. However, the worm's mouth is actually multidimensional, but not in isolation, which basically what I'm saying is that it exists on the same plane as Toji, but it's essentially a shared phenomenon. Its technique serves as a gateway to a multidimensional realm, it's important to note that the worm isn't inherently multidimensional, and all it really is is an entry point within its mouth. Even attempting to destroy the gateway won't yield any results, as the portal itself is also three-dimensional. It's very similar to the reasons that Saitama isn't 4D due to his hyperspace feats, as it's like me saying that I'm building level because I can destroy a door to said building. Hell, you might even be able to make the argument that Sage Mode Naruto could potentially beat Gojo using the Frog Kumite, which the primary function of the Frog Kumite involves harnessing the surrounding natural energy present both around the Sage and the intended target. What this essentially does is generate a tangible impact on the target resembling a punch, which this pretty much just uses nature energy which is already present within Gojo if we're using verse equalization, while in Naruto's case, it permits the environment regardless of any actions taken. Naruto simply needs to activate this energy on Gojo to initiate its desired outcome, which the energy doesn't require physical travel to actually reach the intended target as Naruto only needs to be in close proximity to actually activate its effects. But Toaster, what about Hollow Purple? Well, we can actually get Hollow Purple to FDL if we use the fact that it's actually imaginary mass, which imaginary mass has a squared mass that is negative, meaning that it will always travel faster than light. While you can maybe make the argument that Sage Mode Naruto would not be able to actually dodge this, Sage of the Six Paths Naruto would 100% be able to dodge a light speed attack as even at the beginning of the war arc in KCM1, he was able to dodge the Raikage, who in his V2 lightning cloak can move at light speed, and he was shown completely blitzing him. The argument for Sage Mode Naruto being FTL would come from mainly part 1, with Haku being able to pretty much just move at faster than light speeds within his ice mirrors, and zero-tailed cloak form Naruto being able to pretty much just bully bro. And if we're talking about Naruto post 6 pass Zenjutsu in base 6 pass Sage Mode, he was actually shown kicking true sticking orbs, which as we established, is Duraneg on an even higher level than Hollow Purple, which works on the atomic level. Meaning that if we're talking about Naruto towards the end of Shippuden, Hollow Purple would absolutely do fucking nothing to Naruto, it's crazy. If we're talking about Sage Mode Naruto, then you might be able to make an argument for Naruto actually being both slower than Hollow Purple and being able to get hurt by Hollow Purple. And if you're using the highest form of speed scaling for Gojo, they might be comparable in Sage Six Paths. And if we're using the highest speed scaling for Gojo, you might be able to say that he's comparable to Sage Mode Naruto. However, as I said, he would 100% outscale him in AP. So yeah, it's really not good for Gojo, to be completely real with you, but yeah. Also, if you guys want updates on my videos every so often, then be sure to follow my Twitter, as well as my TikTok, as I do post on there every so often, a lot more frequently than I do on my YouTube channel, so be sure to follow them, and yeah, bye.